I know what a lot of people say about uh, public schools, like your school, like your high school, where 100% of the kids, and by the way, these uh, kids who are coming to Capital Prep, uh, this is not the cream of the crop, this is not what you normally think of as preppies, right? This is uh, not wealthy, uh, white, Anglo-Saxon, privileged young people. Am I right about that? That's 70% poor, 85% minority, and um, the overwhelming majority from single-parent households. I told one newspaper reporter when she asked a, a stupid question, I said to her, you know, I'll know that we've been successful when you start accusing us of cheating. When you <laughs> liberal people, you, you liberal folks who claim to care about minorities, when you look at the same black and Latino kids who you say you care about, and you say that we somehow creamed in death, that they are the different black and Latino kids. And but again, like, this is not the conversation about poor kids. This is an American tragedy. We are spending more money than most nations on Earth ever have on our public education system, and it's not delivering. It's just not. Try and call tech support and end up with somebody uh, in the U.S. Good luck with that. What about, we're in the midst of a presidential campaign. Have you heard a lot of um, uh, constructive proposals for reform from any of the candidates? Strange as it is, the only person I've heard mention anything that felt close to what I would support has been Ted Cruz. Um, Donald Trump mentioned he's interested in um, charters, but he's got a whole bunch of other stuff that I struggle with. Hillary Clinton is the darling. I mean, she is the darling of the teachers' union. They can't wait. They can't wait. Uh, and, and in hopes that she will be, that she's the presumptive nominee. So there's nothing from the Democratic side even close to ed reform. They want to take us back to the dark ages. They say that they care about um, uh, about diversity, but how do you care about diversity when you're creating schools that, that continue to isolate black, Latino, and poor children? And then even the kids who come from means don't get access to, to school choice. We have to fight for school choice. Uh, no, there is no doubt about it. Uh, we, it's interesting because we also spoke recently to Dr. Catherine Newman, who's provost of the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, and she just wrote a book about vocational education, which has been decimated in this country. Now, I know that at Capital Prep, you, you do 100% of your kids go on to four-year colleges and universities, which is terrific, and I know they do well there. But uh, do, do you think there is, is more of a place for vocational education, for preparing people for jobs in high school, to keep them in high school and help them either, prepare for the workforce? Yeah, I don't think it's either or, Michael. I think that you prepare children to enter into the economy at its highest level and let them decide which level that means for them. You don't want a contractor who's supposed to be working on your home to be dumb. You want her or him to be literate. You want them to be productive because they're gonna have children. And you want them to be able to train their children up the way that you want them to, or to be able to read medication. There's members in our society with Ben Franklin, who said that the, uh, from my alma mater, who said that, um, that in order for us to have a true democracy, education is a cornerstone. So it, it, just because someone wishes to be a hairdresser or, or, or an electrician doesn't mean that they should be a, a taken out of the conversation around college preparation. College preparation simply means the highest level of preparation that this country can, can uh, establish. And then what you decide to do with it, whether you decide to take our trade or not, is up to you. Uh, we're speaking with Steve Perry, and 